So let's have a look at Ben's pelvic floor muscles. As with uh, convention, we're going to have the left side of the screen on the patient's right. So to get a good look at the pelvic floor muscles, we're going to be looking through the bladder here. The probe is going to be positioned just above the pubic bones in the midline. And first we're going to take a transverse image. So this is going to give us a look at the base of the bladder here. We might just see if we can adjust our angle and depth a little bit to give us the best quality image that we can. I think that's pretty good right there. And we'll just have a quick look at the frequency as well because again, if we change it to 6.5 here, we're getting a very crisp image and we're not losing too much power at the bottom of the screen here, so that should be fine. So again, what we're, what we're going to look at quickly is, is the image as a whole. We're looking for symmetry here. So we can see that for Ben, a little bit of a drop down here on the right side compared to the left side. And again, that may correlate with uh, one-sided issues that the patient may be having. And what we're going to be looking for here is Ben's ability to control the descent of the bladder by contracting the pelvic floor muscles. So it's an indirect measure of pelvic floor strength. We're not actually visualising the pelvic floor muscles. All we're seeing here is the base of the bladder, or the inferior posterior wall of the bladder. And by contracting the pelvic floor muscles, what we should see is that rise up a little bit. So it's going to come from here, up in the screen a little bit. So what I might get you to do then is just again start with a, a straight leg raise or just bring the leg straight out for me and back up. Okay, yeah, so that's good actually. And one more time and back. So what we're seeing there is the bladder wall actually raise up. For most people it will normally fall because there's a, a, a basically increased pressure on the pelvic floor and it usually causes the bladder to go down in the image. The other thing I might get you to do is just a Valsalva maneuver, so just, yeah, and that's what often happens with people when they do a straight leg raise, okay? So your core, your pelvic floor in particular, seems to be doing a very good job there of stabilizing and holding up the bladder. The other thing I'll get you to do is just try and do an active contraction of your pelvic floor for us. Perfect, you can hold it there so you can see that inferior posterior wall of the bladder rise up there and he's able to hold that really well. Okay, so good strength. Things to keep in mind with this type of image, again, uh, if somebody is very active already in their pelvic floor muscles and we're asking them to do a contraction but we're not seeing much of a lift up because the, the wall of the bladder is already quite high to the hypertonic pelvic floor muscles, it can be interpreted as weakness. Uh, which would be incorrect in that situation. Times that that might happen would be if the bladder is overfilled and they're already tensing up, or if they've just got a hypertonic pelvic floor as it is. Other things to keep in mind are the tightness or the uh, tonicity of the diaphragm, which will also affect the ability of the bladder to move either up or down. Okay, so let's change from this view here. Uh, what we might do just before we do that is save an image. So and just relax everything for me and get this in good position. So everything relaxed. And we're going to save that there. And then I'll just get you to contract for me. And we're going to save it there. Okay. So we're going to have that to have a look at for later. Alright, the next image that we're going to have a look at for the pelvic floor is the sagittal orientation. So again, it's going to be in the mid sagittal line. We're going to have the left-hand side of the screen on this little dot on the probe facing the patient's head. And here, again, we come down to the top of the pubic bone. And here we're visualizing the bladder in the sagittal plane. What we're looking at here is the neck of the bladder and the posterior inferior wall down here. So again, if you're able to just do an 
active straight leg raise first. Let's we'll see what happens there. Again, Ben's got really good control through there, so we don't see a lot of descent. And just do a Valsalva technique for us. Okay, perfect. And relaxing again. So you can see the descent of the bladder down through there. And the other thing I'll get you to do is just an active contraction of your pelvic floor. And that's exactly what we want to see, is that up and to the left movement of the bladder wall and relax. The other thing that you can do if you want to, to evaluate the quality of the movement over time and see if they're able to hold this, uh, this muscle contraction is to put it on BM mode. So with BM mode, we're going to have a look at left hand side of the screen being the image as it is and then this being the image over time. So if you're able to just hold, hold a contraction for us for a few seconds, turn on. And we're looking at these lines and seeing how well Ben's able to keep them stable over a period of seconds. And again, very good, apart from some small movements for breathing. And relax. Okay, we can see it drops off there. So that can be very useful for determining the endurance or the, um, the ability of these muscles to maintain that tone over time.